Hey guys, I thought I'd just quickly make another video here to talk about managing files in InDesign and the best way to link files so that you don't have issues. I mentioned in a previous video that you should try and avoid copy and pasting images from a web browser and that sort of thing. Um, and I didn't end up actually talking about the correct way to manage your files and why that's important with InDesign. So I thought I'd make its own video because it's a pretty important thing to do. So we'll jump into the program and we'll have a look at it. Now this is the portfolio that I started making in my last few videos. And you may remember that when I actually she made these images what I did is I created a text frame and then I went to file place and I inserted the image this way rather than pasting it in now I want to do that again with another image and I want to show you a couple of things and then talk about why that's important so I've made a text frame here and I've downloaded um, a particular image that I'm going to use now this image if I tell this to show me details is a one megabyte image it's 1016 kilobytes if I insert this image and I've just uh, changed the fitting so that it actually fits there. It's just a random image that I found online. It's obviously not relevant to this particular portfolio, but the idea is it's a high resolution image and it's a thousand kilobytes, it's a megabyte big. Now if I save this file, and then I come to my web browser and I have a look, I have a look at this. My InDesign file, it's not it didn't increase by a thousand kilobytes just then. It increased a little bit, but not by a thousand kilobytes. Now what InDesign actually does, so if you're in Microsoft Word and you paste an image into Microsoft Word and then you save your Word file, the image is saved inside the Microsoft Word file. A copy of that of that picture gets saved inside your Word file. So in terms of hard drive space, and what you now would have is you would have well potentially you could have the image saved on your computer or if you just copied it from the internet then then if you copy and paste it from um, a web browser it temporarily saves in your RAM obviously and then when you paste it into your Word document and save your Word document it's now also saved in the Word document so you either have a duplicate of it now either on your hard drive and in your Word document or you have a duplicate of it that's in your RAM and in your hard drive uh, and in your word document until that gets removed from your ram or and but then what you end up with is a very large word document file now if you were to do that for your whole portfolio you would end up with a huge word document that has presumably if you're doing your record of procedures correctly you could have dozens and dozens of photos there that are going to take up a lot of file size and a word document's going to be big so what InDesign actually does is it just creates a link to where the file is saved externally and you can see on all of these image frames there's a little there's a little chain link at the top of them and what that means is that every time you open up InDesign it tells InDesign to look for a specific location on your computer where you have that file saved so this file for example that I just put is linked and it is currently saved in this particular folder. So every time I load up this InDesign file, it reloads these images from here. And so what actually happens now is if I, I'm not going to delete this because I'm going to stuff it on the next few, but let's say I cut that and I go and paste it onto my desktop. Now InDesign's got a question mark there. And it's got an error down the bottom because it can't find that image anymore. Now, obviously, I can still see it there, right? I can still see it. I can still edit it. So what's the go? I mean, it's fine, right? Well, the thing is, if I change this into high quality display, it's going to be blurrier than it would be. And also, if I was now to go and print this out on a piece of A4 paper, this image would be blurry. It's still going to be there in some way. InDesign saves a low resolution, a low quality preview of all of your images, which is why the file size here did increase a bit. Um, but it doesn't save the high resolution thing. In the case where my image was one megabyte and this increased by 800 kilobytes, that file size difference is negligible. But if you're an architect and you're building you know, posters that are A1 or a billboard, for example, and you've got super high resolution photographs of your buildings and you're going to put them on there and, and you need them to be the size of the, of a billboard, your photographs might be, you know, 100 megabytes. They might be a gigabyte, the photographs, uncompressed, whatever, uh, TIFF files that are going to be huge raw, raw images off a high, a high quality camera. And in that case, your InDesign file is still only going to increase a tiny bit because you would have that huge file saved elsewhere on your computer. 
So what's important now is that I could I would update this link. If you've moved a file on your computer, you can tell InDesign where it's gone by double clicking this, going into links, missing link. Okay, I can write uh, what I do here. I can choose. Oh, they've moved it. You used to be able to right click here and then say. And then say relink. They've changed it. Okay, so what I actually need to do is relink this. So to do that, I can come up into my links toolbar, and here's a list of all of the images in my document, and I can right click on the on whichever one has a question mark. I can say relink, and I can go to on my computer where I have saved it. Now I moved it a minute ago to my desktop, so there it is, and I'm going to hit open, and now it relinks that image to the original higher resolution version, and that link goes away. If you have a folder of images and they're all named in a sensible way, as soon as you update the link of one, it would update all of them in the whole in the whole document. So what I would suggest that you do is that you somewhere on your computer, hopefully if you're in year 11 and 12, you've already mastered, you know, managing your files correctly and you've got a folder somewhere called woodwork or electronics or whatever it is, and I would suggest that you make a new folder and call this something like portfolio images. Now, if there's some, if there's an image that you want from Google that you found online that you want to use, instead of copying it from your browser, you know, let's say I, for whatever reason, really want to use this picture of a monkey in my thing, instead of copying it from here and then coming to InDesign and pasting it, which will give you a low resolution preview, what you should do is back here, right click and go save image as, and put that into the folder that you just made, that portfolio images thing, save it. It's now downloaded on your computer. It's in this folder as a monkey. And now in InDesign, I can make a frame and I can insert that monkey. And it's going to create a link to the high resolution photo and ensure that you get high resolution pictures of everything at any time. Uh, if you're taking photos of your project on your phone, I would suggest getting those photos off your phone and then saving them in that same folder here. Don't just, you know, use some other way of pasting them or drag and dropping them in. Save them in a folder and then create a frame and place them correctly to ensure that you get a higher quality print every time. Uh, that's that. Another time I'll talk about how you might insert a high resolution, not blurry version of a time management plan or a timeline Gantt chart that you created in something like Microsoft Excel. But I'll talk about that in another video. Thanks.